Hi, my name is Miss Christie. I'm a teaching artist with the PACE program. We integrate art lessons with the school curriculum. We are coming to you today thanks to the Acadiana Center for the Arts, the nonprofit organization that manages the PACE program, and the Lafayette Parish School System in Lafayette, Louisiana. Today we're going to be talking about ring-tailed lemurs. You'll only need a few things for this art project, crayons, a pencil, and paper. You can use white construction paper, but regular copy paper is fine. Maybe you've seen lemurs at the zoo, but they're originally from one place. There's only one place in the world that has lemurs, is Madagascar. Can you say that? That's a big name, Madagascar. Maybe you've seen the movie that has ring-tailed lemurs in it. The ring-tailed lemurs that you see in the zoo don't necessarily live in the same habitat that they would in Madagascar. Their habitat is being torn down and burned in the place where they're from, so they are an endangered species along with the rest of the lemurs. There are just over 30 different species of lemurs, and some of them are as small as a mouse, and some are as big as a large cat. Ringtail lemurs are just about the size of a house cat, and we're going to draw one sitting in a very special kind of tree that only grows in Madagascar. It's in what they call the spiny forest. And these trees are a lot like cactuses in that they're covered in spikes or thorns, but they also grow in one long trunk and they have these tiny leaves and flowers all over them. So we're gonna be drawing a lemur sitting in one of those trees. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is fold your paper twice. That'll help me guide you through the whole project. You're going to fold corner to corner and make it a nice seam. And then you're going to fold it again, corner to corner. Pinching it tight so that you create that really nice seam. It'll create two lines, one going one vertical and one horizontal. You'll draw the details in with your pencil first and then we'll color it in with crayon. There are several colors that you'll need for this project. You'll need brown and green for the trees. You'll need black, white, gray and a tan color for the lemurs and blue for your sky. So let's get started. I want you to find the middle of your paper with your finger. You'll see that the seams are creating a crisscross or a T in the middle. This will help me guide you to draw all the different shapes. I'm working up here on the wall, but you're probably working on a table. If there's ever a point that you need to press pause and catch up to where I am and then press play again, please do so as many times as you need to. I'm going to keep moving along. The very first thing we're going to do is draw in our spiny tree. So what I want you to do is find the middle of your paper with your finger and trace it to the left side of the paper. Once you do that, I want you to go up just a little bit and put one little dot. After you do that, put another little dot on top, just about the space of your finger. Next, find the middle again, and you're going to trace to the right side of your paper and then follow it up just a little bit on the edge and put another dot there, maybe just a little higher on this side. And then again, you'll put another dot above it. 
That's how wide our branch is going to be. Trace your finger down to this part of the paper and you can put another set of dots, one on top of the other. That's going to be another branch. So we're going to start on the left side and we're going to go towards the middle with a straight line. You watch me first and then you try. I'm going to draw all the way to that folded line and stop. You go ahead and try. After you do that, go just a little bit further and then angle that up to where your dots are up here. Next, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to go to the middle with the bottom dot. You're going to, we're connecting the dots but we're doing it in a way that's gonna give you a couple of different branches of your spiny tree. And you're gonna trace, you're gonna draw that diagonal line up to the bottom dot. Next, right here at this little space that kinda of looks like an elbow, you're gonna draw down to these two dots. There's the first branches of your spiny tree. We can draw in a couple of more, a couple more branches a little bit later. But let's work on our ringtail lemur now. Ringtail lemurs have a long striped black and white tail just like raccoons do, but it's a long skinny tail that's actually longer than its body. And we're going to draw that right here. In the very middle of your paper, go to the branch and you're going to draw two dots on that branch. One on each side of that middle line. Can you see that? This is where our tail is going to come from. So watch me first and then you try. We're going to go all the way down to about here, just above the bottom of the page. So you're going to go down and curl it back up and come back to that dot that you drew. If you draw it too wide, that's okay. That's why we're drawing in pencil. Artists often draw something first in pencil and then go back over it with the color. If you make a mistake, say if you made your tail too fat, like this, if you, if you made your tail too wide like this, you can just draw the correct size, compare it to the one that you drew too wide, and then just erase the one that you don't want. Again, that's why we're drawing in pencil. So we're going to draw in the stripes just very lightly. When you draw in details, try not to draw too dark. That way, when you color it, the colors of the crayon will show. To make our lemur, we're going to draw a series of ovals. Everything in nature is made of shapes. And if you look at our bodies, sometimes our heads look like ovals and we can build something out of all those shapes that we know. So the first shape you're going to draw is going to be right here over the top of the branch, above the tail, and above the branch. You're just going to draw a kind of oval. Now his body should be shorter than his tail. So you can even use your pencil to measure, okay, this is how big my body is, and it's definitely shorter than the tail. You don't want to make it too tall like this because you won't have room for his head. So if you do that, just draw the size that you need and then erase the one that you don't need. Next, we're going to draw in the different features of its arms and legs. First, 
on the side of its body at the bottom, you're going to draw a small oval. And on the other side, you're going to do the same thing. This is the front part of its leg as it sits on the branch. Lemurs are really special because they have thumbs like we do on their feet and their hands. So they don't just have a big toe. They have a big toe that's like a thumb. They can grab onto things with that big toe. So just put in some little circles or little ovals for their toes. Erase the part of its body that's inside the leg. And then we're going to work on the arms. So right up here at the top of this oval, you're going to draw a small oval, kind of like we did with the leg, but just a little smaller. Just on this left side. Then you're going to draw another oval going toward the middle of the body. After you do that, you're going to draw a smaller circle or oval with some little lines for the fingers. Next, we're going to draw the other arm on the right side of the body. And this one is going to be out going outward toward the branch. So draw an oval going toward the branch. After you do that, you're going to draw one that's just a little shorter, going toward the branch. One, two ovals stacked on each other. This looks like an elbow. Then you're going to draw the same kind of circular shape or a smaller oval for the, the hand reaching out to the branch. They eat the flowers and leaves that are on this tree. The next part is we're going to draw the head. The head is actually much smaller than the body. And watch me first and then you try. It's a bit of a triangle at the bottom, like it has a pointy little chin. And then it has kind of a circle on top almost like it's an ice cream cone. So you'll draw a triangle with a half circle or semicircle on top. And then you're going to erase those lines that are on the inside. You'll erase the little tiny tip at the bottom and just round it out a little bit. They don't really have that pointy of a chin, but it helps to draw in the shape of the triangle first. They do, however, have pointy little ears like a cat. So watch me first and then you try. Up and then down. And up and down. They have a little point at the top. You can see in these pictures that these lemurs, these ring-tailed lemurs, are sitting in the sun, sunbathing. And each morning that they wake up, they sit in the sun and they warm their bellies and they open their hands to the sun to wake up in the morning. You can see that they live in these family groups where the females take care of the babies and they're actually, instead of being having a, a male or a boy lemur that's in charge of the troop, there, there is a alpha female that is in charge of the troop and she tells everyone when to eat and when to go to sleep. So if you've drawn in your ears and your head, next we're ready for the nose. So they have noses very similar to dogs and that they're little black wet noses. And their little noses are um, surrounded by what looks very much like a triangle. So draw in a triangle pointing up toward the top of its head 
with its nose at the very top. We're going to color that in with a black crayon later. Their eyes have a little mask, very similar to raccoons, but they're a little bit different in that they're kind of leaf shaped. So there's a point at the top and a point at the bottom. So it's almost like two C's coming together. Inside, you'll put their big wide eyes and you can put a little pupil. We're gonna color that in orange, and then we're gonna color around the eyes black. And you can see that their eyes are orange in the sunlight. All right, so we have the body and the limbs. And I want you to draw in some spikes on the branches. That would just be little little thorns, like the, sh the shape of the letter V, on both sides. So if you do one on the top, do one on the bottom. They have a very unique way of jumping from tree to tree, and they don't get hurt by these spikes. They know exactly how to climb these trees and get the food that they need. Ringtail lemurs are vegetarians. They only eat vegetables and fruit and flowers. Now is also when you can draw in some more branches, which I think I'm gonna do. Just a few more. Because remember, it's a forest. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but it just adds some more detail. And you'd put in the spikes on those trees as well. So ringtail lemurs have what they call a stink fights. The boys rub these special glands that um, produces a smell, kind of like a skunk, and they wave and they put it on their tails, and then they wave their tails around in front of each other, trying to out stink each other. Isn't that so wild? So I'm just putting some spikes on all of my trees. So I've drawn in some more of the spiny trees and I've created a forest for my lemur to find his food in. And now I'm gonna color him and I'm gonna start with that, that tail that they have. They're the only ones that have that black and white tail. So I'm gonna do a pattern of black and white. They have 13 black stripes on their tail. And they spend most of their time on the ground. They're actually the only lemur that lives on the ground, but they go up in the trees to get food and probably run from predators. So I'm just outlining all of the features. Um, some of them have their little fingers and toes have a little bit of black in them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make their fingers and toes black. I'm gonna outline all their features with black so that they show up really well. And then I'm gonna color in around the eyes a little bit in their ears, and that little place around their nose. They have a lot of gray in their fur, but they also have a little bit of tan or brown. 
So I'm going to color just a little bit of tan and brown just on their arms and their legs. And then I'm going to come in with gray and I'm going to color the rest of their body. But I'm going to leave this area in the middle white, um, the white of the paper, because they tend to have little white bellies. They are awake during the daytime and they go to sleep at night just like we do. And then their eyes are orange. So go ahead and color their little eyes in orange. Also have a white crayon here. I'm using to just kind of smooth out the three different colors. to draw his nose back in. When you color in your trees, start with green and don't just color it. Draw little circles. So you're going to fill in this kind of texture and you can use as many different greens as you want to. They tend to be like a, a regular um, regular green or a light green and I'm just using regular green here and I'm just going through all my branches with little circles so you fill in your branches and then come back and we'll do the thorns you can see that I have colored in all of my branches of my spiny forest with a regular green color but then you can see the ones that I went back with a light green or a, a yellow green and brightened it up a little bit so what I did was I just went back over the regular green and I just did those same circular patterns or texture that I did on the branches with the first green I always recommend to my students and my own kids that they use more than one color. Experiment with how colors mix together. Figure out which ones you like. Those combinations will make your artwork unique and special for, that's just your own. Lots of artists can do the same picture, but everyone is going to have their own unique style. There, so my tree is done and I'm going to put my, my leaves are done and I'm going to put in my brown spi uh, spines or thorns. So you're just going to color each one brown. And as you're doing that, I'm going to talk to you a little more about ring-tailed lemurs. Before I said that they live in a troop. A group of them is called a troop, and they have kind of what's like a queen, the alpha female that tells and guides everyone to safety and where to sleep and what foods to eat. And they care for their young together. They work as a team. And usually there's about 30 individuals in a troop, but there can be between 15 and 20. They have very strong hind legs that they get around on, but all four of their limbs are used for climbing and walking. Their tails are not like monkey tails. That, that, that can grab, that's called prehensile, but they are expressive and they use their tails to communicate how they're feeling. So if their tails are relaxed and, and, and standing in the air while they're walking and just 
flowing gently side to side, that means that they're relaxed and they're happy. But if their tails are stiff or they're moving them around in a, a erratic or a quick way, that usually means that they're tense and nervous. Like when they get in those stink fights. I said before that they're endangered be mostly because their habitat is being destroyed in Madagascar, but it's also because now they're being hunted when they weren't before. For a long time, the people of Madagascar didn't hunt the lemurs because they believed it was bad luck to kill them. But in uh, modern day, um, a lot of people don't believe that anymore, and they're actually hunting them to either eat them or for their fur. So now they're endangered, and they're one of the protected animals. I've colored in all of my thorns in, on my spiny trees, and now I'm going to go back with a blue crayon and color in the background as if it were the sky. You can do your background any way you want. You can either fill in more branches or you can use a blue crayon and fill everything in. You can see here that in my daughter's picture, she colored in a sun in the top corner of hers. And you can do that too if you want to. Now I'm going to go ahead and just fill everything in behind the trees with sky blue. I always try to get my kids and my art students to fill the page. Only leave what needs to be white, the white of the paper, like his belly. And maybe you've noticed that when, with crayon, if you get too much on there, crayon is great because you can actually scratch some of it off and come back with more color or, or different something different. So I'm going to fill this in. You fill in your sky and then we'll finish this project together. So I'm just finishing up the background of blue, sky blue. I also wanted to tell you that they also live in caves. There are these caves in Madagascar that um, the, the lemurs have, the ring-tailed lemurs have been seen uh, living in there. And their coat, their, their fur actually is a little bit camouflaged against the gray stone. And sometimes they build nests in trees, but they also live in these caves. In zoos, people uh, that take care of these animals try to create a, a natural habitat for them. But you can see in this picture that they also created a Thanksgiving feast of lots of fruits and vegetables. So here's my lemur in the spiny forest. You can see that his tail is hanging down long, longer than his body, and that he's up there looking for his food. I wish I could see your ring-tailed lemur. Thank you so much for being with me today for this art project. If you want to share your artwork with us, you can post it on our Facebook page for the Acadiana Center for the Arts art and education or you can email it to us at our website that's acadiana center for the arts dot org if you would like to support programs like this you can also reach us through our website these lessons will be posted on the acadiana open channel at 8 a.m for kindergarten and 9 a.m for first and second grade that's Cox Channel 16 and LUS Channel 4. If you would like private lessons with me, you can contact me by emailing me through my website at lushceramics.com. 
thanks again for being with me, and I hope that you make art every day.